Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. It's weird because sometimes I start to feel guilty about having good conversations before the podcast. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I was just like, we just turn it on and go for it. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. This, I'm just letting you know. This gives me a rush down my spine. Mm. I, I feel this when I push it. It gives me a sense of power. Oh, that's just something else. You know, I love giving you rushes down your spine. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're we're live with uh, roommate Joe Ernst. Roommate, good college buddy. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thanks for traveling here, by the way. Oh yeah, definitely. It was like. Maybe 30 steps, but... Probably. Two flights of stairs. Yeah. And and there's some walking in between the stairs, too. It's two more flights than a lot of people do. I wish I wish we could have a round of applause for this Thank guy you. right Thank here. Thank you. <laughs> We're wearing camo right now. We're both wearing red with a red background. Dude, you, you have yeah. some green screen potential. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine just floating. <laughs> you should do that for one episode. <laughs> just really ignorantly just... <laughs> just green screen the head. I actually, I messed around with the green screen over break. I think I may solve it. Did you do that? Yeah. That's yeah, great. that's probably where I got the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I should have worn something green that day. That would have been so funny. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we played. It was kind of a cool concept. We like played. Um, uh, do you know Colby Nicholson? I don't know if you met him down here. I think I, did he work out the rec for a little bit? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I know. Cool. So he, uh, he, he's always been in a film, and we like kind of connected like early college because of that. Mm. And he... Uh, He's, he threw out the idea. He's like, hey, man, I get a green screen if you want. Like, we could play FIFA and then do and pod. Yeah, I think I saw the... Awesome. Yeah, I think I saw that video. I was like, that sounds pretty fun. It was cool. Yeah. It was cool. At first, it was really it was really bizarre because, like... That's weird dynamics going on. <laughs> true. Like, you're so focused on, like, so so into FIFA, and then you're, like, also into, like, the conversation. Yeah. But it, it ended up working, surprisingly. Yeah. I need to watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, oh, dude, this is a story that I was thinking of, like, before I, uh, before, like, while coming up with topics that you'll appreciate. I thought of you immediately. This happened over gotcha. summer, too. And you saved it for a pot. I like it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I'm walking in. I get ready for the gym. And I'm, like, about to, about to leave. Just quickly throw on a shirt. And it's a cutoff shirt. I drive up, park in the Planet Fitness parking lot. You forgot and, pants. Exactly. <laughs> no. And I, st I walk in, I swipe, and the guy's like, hey, man, I'm sorry, but you can't work out here today. I was like, wait, why? And then he goes, oh, like, you, you can't work out with, with a cutoff shirt. And I was so mad. I was just Dude. like, I was like, this is a joke. And I just left. And then I went out to my car. Luckily, I had a shirt in there. But, like, I thought of you immediately because you're like, isn't there a policy you can't work out with cutoffs? Yeah. Because the one here in Springfield, they don't care. They don't care. But, like, the one in Winsfield, it sucks, I guess. I heard, uh, I need to confirm this with him, but apparently at Truman's gym, uh, I have a friend, Joe Haig, he goes there, so I'm going to try and have him vouch for this maybe in the comments or, so or something. But he, he, I heard from my brother that, so Joe told my brother, my brother told me that, they have some weird rule <laughs> where it's, it sounds fake. It's like you can't walk into the gym with shoes on. Wait, what? Yeah, no, I don't get it. It's like you have to take off your shoes, you walk in, and then you put them back on. <laughs> are you, are you, that doesn't sound real. Yeah, no, I know. That I'll, sounds like walking into, like, a Buddhist temple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then you just put them back on. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. I'll... I'll I'll text them and try and like vouch for that. So I have a little proof behind it, but I, I, I heard that they better sanitize that like thirty feet of walking distance. <laughs> <Yeah. It's> like <laughs> they better have someone. They better constantly have a worker mop it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, what's that sport that they like? like Curling. They shoot, yeah. It, it's like right behind you walking is just like, a, a guy with a mop. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Fuck. <laughs> Wait, what if somebody does more socks? No, yeah, I don't like. I, I didn't ask questions because it was just so far out there. I was just like, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know about that one. I wonder if he's like, messing with you. He very well could be, and if he is, then like, this is the ultimate joke. <laughs> I'm not telling it on, on something that's gonna be posted. <laughs> He's, he's, he's been plotting this for like a year. He's like, maybe he'll get on his roommate's podcast and oh, tell the story. But this, oh my God, this this was before Thanksgiving of last year. This totally just reminded me. Yeah. My buddies convinced me. So like this was right whenever Trump got in office or something. Or 
I think I think it was around no, it was around like Christmas time, but like it, whatever time it was, it, it was uh, Trump just got in office, and they're like, dude, Mexico's becoming a state. They had me going this entire really? night. Like, like one of my friends is so convincing, and he's way more knowledgeable about politics. So than you I can am. just like say some big words, throw them out, and just be like, yeah, they're seceding from the blah 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 blah. I'm just, just like, like oh. no way, are you serious? <laughs> that is wild. Fifty <laughs> one. <laughs> and I go. To, so this happens the day before. I think it was Thanksgiving. The day before, which doesn't even make sense. Don't tell me you went to Thanksgiving and told your <laughs> my entire family. I'm like, I'm like. Did you guys hear? Trump is making the, he's merging us with Mexico. Like this is awesome, right? I bet. Like this is good for the economy. I, I can see your grandfather just be like, Jesus Christ, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody like told me I was wrong or anything. They're like, no, I just I had I had I, not uh, heard about that. And they just kept being they're like, no, we didn't hear. <laughs> Shut up with your your college conspiracies. <laughs> Do you remember when uh, Trump got fifty million people to believe that he'd be a good president? Oh, yeah. I do remember that. that. That was that was quite the ploy. I I, I remember <laughs> watching. Did we were we together whenever the the election was going out? No, we were together for the 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 notorious primary. Or it wasn't the primary. It was the it was the debate between Hillary and. Did Donald. we watch a debate together? Yeah, it was the one that was in St. Louis. Was I ugly and for they that? Well, I mean, to be honest, that was, was like I one of the few times you've gotten on my nerves. I was just kind of sad because you were just very, you very, very strong, upset. <laughs> and I just didn't have much of an opinion. I was just like, okay, it's like uh, we're trying to hear this. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted, yeah, I wanted to hear like what they were saying, but I didn't judge after. That's what um, I watched one with. Uh, it was Alize, and it got to the point where like, I, I caught myself. I was like, I'm talking so much, I can't even hear what they're saying. It was like this is pointless. Like I'm literally just like hearing myself talk. Why am I doing this? I, you, could, you uh, <laughs> if you were in the room, you could definitely tell what side you held. Oh, I'm, I'll put I'm, it that way. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, we've yeah. come a long way. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not ashamed of my stance on that topic. <laughs> I will say that on the pod. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. It is, nobody should be. Nobody should be ashamed of there. Because everybody wants what's best, and you're passionate about what's best for this country. Yeah. I mean, it's everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but, like, mine's obviously right. No, I'm just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just, and if you disagree with me, then, then you're, you're wrong. wrong. <laughs> like, it, I, there's no other way. In the words of uh, Charles Barkley, I may be wrong, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Charles Barkley? I call my dog that because their name's Charlie. But. Uh, it was an NBA player in the 80s. Mm. He was, there's actually um, a theory that, uh, so he was like, he had a commercial where he said, like, I'm not a role model. And it was like, because he would always get shit, like, I'll set an example, and he just, like, outwardly finally said in a commercial, like, like, I know I'm supposed to be a role model, but, he, like, he, he said straight up, like, don't look up to me. He's just like, I'm flawed, like, don't look up to me. Wow. Which I respect in a certain way, but it's also, like, Try and carry a little responsibility, but anyway, so he was both sides for sure. Yeah. yeah was, so he was. Uh, have you seen his golf swing? Yes, you've shown me this. You've yeah. shown me this. Okay. Notoriously bad. <laughs> There's a theory that one way, or the theory is the reason his swing got that bad because he was apparently used to be good. Is he played with Jordan so much, and Jordan is just such like an insane trash talker that he got in Barkley's head so much he develops a, that shitty of a swing. And yeah, and there's also a theory that. Um, Muggsy Bogues, he was like a mm -hmm. five five <laughs> NBA player. Um, he had the ball at the top of the key, and MJ was off on like five feet so he could shoot. Mm -hmm. And apparently, this is how the story goes. All he said was shoot it midget. He shot it, missed the shot, and his stats are like significantly worse after that shot. No way. It was like MJ actually got to him. Wow. Yeah. That's that's wild. Like, because I've I've heard stories like similar stories. Kill that bug. Uh, I, I've heard similar stories about how like MJ was so notoriously just intense to yeah. where like he could like just look you in the eye and like steal your soul. Almost. Yeah, and it's weird because like everyone wanted to be liked by MJ, so like they would all like almost like try and like appease to him, even yeah. though like it's stupid because it's a competitive sport. Really? Yeah, like everyone like wanted MJ to respect them, which like makes sense because he's the best. But uh -huh. like it's almost like they like wouldn't. Matches and intensity because of that. I wonder if that's all part of his genius in the basketball. He made everyone want to like him so much that like they wouldn't match his intensity. Wow. I don't know if that's true, but yeah, it's 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 fun to like say like this is what they plotted, this is what they meant to do. I don't know. That's hard. That's hard to say though. Yeah. Then um, 
That's another that's a, level. If you yeah, know. I know. If you did that intentionally. I swear, he's, he's, he's a psychological genius. But um, there's another story. It's with Barkley that uh, he apparently became buddy-buddy with him and started golfing with him because he knew. Cause, so the Bulls were in the East, and um, Barkley was playing on the Suns at the time, which were in the West, and they were one of the best teams. So okay. if they met, they'd meet in the finals. Mm. And there's also a theory out there that uh, he became good friends with them. So if they ever played in the finals, like Barkley wouldn't go like as crazy because like he liked MJ, like he wouldn't like be trying to like. Uh, he's just like, oh, that's my friend. Like I can't go like crazy, like insane on him. Okay, wow. Yeah, and then MJ won the series. Well, I feel like I feel like MJ didn't uh, have that same mentality though. Do you think so? Oh, like do I think he did that on purpose? Do you think he he didn't go as hard against Charles Barkley because they were buddies? No, no, he. On a, on, on, I think on a basketball court, MJ would. It didn't matter what it didn't take. Like I think he would happily like rip out the heart of his friend if he was on the other team. Wow, it's respectable, like to to yeah. some degree. Like if if it's your job and your craft, if you're willing to go 100, percent like I well respect it. As long as you're not doing anything like illegal or morally wrong. It's weird how like, <laughs> it's almost like he he. I mean, whether his brain was like determined to be like very like ultra competitive or if he wired his brain to be that way i think so i read an autobiography so i'm a, know a little bit about it not auto autos when you, you write it yourself yeah yeah so i just i wrote a or i read a biography it was okay. like someone else wrote it and um it said it was saying how like i think his one-on-one -on -one games with his brother was like what like made him super competitive because like we all had those like you don't have brothers no no so you've never had those insane sibling games no that's what like because i have two brothers the same age more or less like two years off but they heated no like as kids it's like it got so, it got so bad that like we just refused to play sports for a bit together wow like we would max will probably find this funny now but like when we would golf together like, now it's it's hilarious because when we golf, we're, like, trying to make each other better. Because, like, mm -hmm. why not? Like, we're brothers. Right. But back then, it would be, like, we'd call each other around the smallest shit. Just, like, tr not, like, trying to get into each other's heads. But it's, like, we almost, like, didn't want them to, like, progress because we wanted to progress more because we wanted to be better. Okay. okay. Which is, like, so flawed because, like, if we just use that same mentality to try and help each other, it would be better and healthier. Probably did make you guys stronger, though. To a certain degree. Like... We'd definitely, like, leave the course crying at times. Like, we'd throw clubs. We'd break clubs. Like, it was crazy. I, it, this might sound weird, but I'm actually jealous right now. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> like, I was always ultra competitive, but, like, yeah. my sisters, like, just didn't want to compete. Yeah. Like, anything. So it was, like, frustrating for me. And so that's interesting. And they're both younger, so, like, I'm sure I don't want to group, you know, or a sexist thing, but, like, I'm sure you're athletically superior. Oh, Because you're easily, older. So, like, like, literally your body's a very just, young age. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so back to the MJ. That's not sexist to say. Yeah, no, no. But uh, what well, it could be twisted that way if I just assume males are more athletic. But I, I think it kind of shows through. But all right, off that subject. But um, so yeah, apparently those games made MJ super competitive. So I think he like kind of wired himself that way. And whenever he had a job, he hated it so much. He's like, I don't want to do this job. And he's like, What else could I do? And it was like, If I play basketball. People want me to be good at sports or whatever, so like no one will tell me not to play basketball. So he, he used that like dislike for the other outcome of life to to wire his motivation. Yeah, I think. What are apparently the two big motivators? It's like fear, isn't it? Or it or is everything like out based out of fear? It's like is it love or fear? I I think that might be it. It's like human motivators, you think? Yeah, it's like every motivation decision comes from, I think, love or fear. Se the seven driving forces behind human motivation? That sounds even more complex. The source is addicted to success! We got some booty on the, uh, <laughs> on the page. Um, so yeah, I think he did have a fear of a normal job, which I feel like... Self-actualization. I just, I love that word. <laughs> same, same. Yeah. That's what I thought was funny, because we yeah. say that. Self protection, love and belonging. I f that that's just the Maslow's hierarchy. Status and esteem. That's part of it. I think that's Maslow's hierarchy right there. Really? Oh, physical physiological needs. That's that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And another fun fact: the reason Jordan took the number twenty three 
which I think is cool. So the one-on-one -on -one games were against his older brother. It's and a spear in this article. Yeah. Psych Psychologytoday.com. Incredible. Good source. <laughs> but um, the reason he took 23 was his brother was 45, and he said, uh, I, I just want to be half of my brother. So like as egomaniac as he seems, like, that's 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 a pretty humbling thing to say. That just you, that just You'd never sound like that. him, yeah. yeah. And that's why when he came back the second time, he wore number forty five, or the first time, he wore forty five for like thirty games. And then I think someone in the playoffs called him out, and he said twenty three doesn't walk through that tunnel anymore. Kind of like MJ is done. And then he came out wearing twenty three the next game. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Whoever that was fucked it up for everyone. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. So he could have technically been the first player to retire two jerseys as well. Before, yeah. Before Kobe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Before the real good. Not Wait. kidding. <laughs> MJ's the good. Wait, is there, is there any debate? Doesn't it typically go? It, it's pretty much the debate between LeBron and, and Jordan, and then Kobe's like a, a close third. I feel like it's literally... It's like, what time do you want to debate it? It's like, obviously, the if you have a, a great in your current time, mm -hmm. because the rest of their career is unknown, and, you know, they could do something crazy, and you want to be, like, the one to call it, uh, I feel like people will naturally say, like, oh, it's LeBron, or who's the actual go Jordan? So people would be, like, LeBron or Jordan. But, like, I feel like when Kobe just won his fifth ring, because he was the current player, it was Kobe or Jordan. Okay. So, like, I feel okay. like it's just kind of like, I really hate when people just try and say, like, LeBron's the GOAT. And it's like, I, I, I personally love LeBron. It's just like, like just let it happen. It's too whatever, early to tell. Too it, early to yeah, tell. Yeah, it's just like, just let it happen. Whatever whatever happens, happens. Just enjoy it. Like, you don't need to be the first one to say it. Like, who cares? Like That's a good point. Yeah. It's just like... People want to be first to the party. Yeah. Just, just enjoy watching it play. And then debate later. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that is, that is interesting, because... Uh, I'll definitely, like, I mean, Ronaldo and Messi are still, they've had enough of their careers to where I can say this with confidence. Yeah. I think they're the two best players to ever play the game. Yeah, I feel like it's important where you, it's like, uh, if they were, if they retired this second, would they be the GOAT or whatever? Like, oh, so yeah. it's like, like, when you're basing your argument on an unknown of the future, Good I point. think that's flawed. Absolutely, absolutely. Because then your imagination is going to make it out to whatever you yeah. to fit your argument. Yeah, yeah. I think there's way too much going on of people finding sources to fit their own argument instead of just reading unbiased sources and making an argument or making an opinion based on like just credible sources. If that make does that say that one more time? Okay, I I phrased that poorly. Uh, it's I like, also I just lost you. Oh no, no, you're good. Um, I feel like people have their opinion. Okay. For whatever reason, like whatever bias, whatever they have their opinion, and then they find sources. They'll block out the ones that discredit their opinion, and they'll find the ones that support your opinion. I feel like there's a there's like a psychological theory to back that. I forgot what it's called. Uh, yeah. Confirmation bias is that what it is? That it I'm, could be. I'm gonna Google yeah. what that is. Degrassi Tyson has a good quote on that, but um, yeah, and and the crazy thing is you can literally find on the internet. It's funny because we're literally doing this on the internet, so like this can now be a source. If we, if I want to say something ridiculous, someone could source this. The tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs or theories. So yeah, it's confirmation yeah. bias. That's what I think politics has turned into. It's just sad. Yeah, they yeah. have their predisposition of what you should think, and then they just find opinions to back their, or just find sources to back their opinion. I feel like the best approach is to kind of like like take CNN, take take Fox News, take yeah. like what's in the middle, take like as many if you like really want to be like educated or knowledgeable yeah. on a topic. You got to view it from a with no which is hard, but with no like predispositions. Yeah, just from a yeah. third eye point of view. It's like if I view it from my point of view, you could say like, oh, my upbringing led me to this, so that's why I think that. So you have to like take yourself out of like your body or whatever then look at it like entirely absolutely yeah and i don't think people do that enough now I, I, I'm, I'm sure i'm flawed to it too like i'm sure i have my own biases i think we're all biased absolutely. yeah absolutely everyone's biased but I, I i hope in the next election people will read like just gather information and then make their opinions based on credible information instead of just Already knowing who you're going to vote for, then finding facts to support who you're going to vote for. 
be honest, just if you look at history, I would say it's unlikely. Yeah, I, I think Trump. That's gonna be a, that could be a positive that that Trump Trump brings. It's like it makes you question your own like disposition or your own biases. I feel like I even, think I think I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I just feel like with people like with Trump, like whenever he does outrageous shit, they're like people justify with humor or with whatever to fit their agenda again. Still, yeah. Like I, uh, like I do think it's making Republicans view like actually look at their own beliefs and be like, do we actually agree with this guy? Because a lot of Republicans initially didn't like him, and then which means they had to overcome whatever their initial bias was. So that's kind of a positive. To fit their agenda for whatever reasoning. Yeah, but then it was ultimately the flawed thing to like re, like fit back their Republican narrative. So like it's it's flawed in my opinion. But I do think Trump leads people to question their own beliefs, which is good. In any more way. Um, I think. I do think it it got out of hand when liberals would just be like, "Oh, you like Trump? Then that means you're." you know racist your blah blah like that was just out of hand absolutely but because you know I, I give you my time <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm not sure that alarm off I think it's <laughs> okay we're, we're halfway <laughs> uh, no I do think because there are those strong character like people calling people's characters out it made those people actually like look at it I don't think everyone actually looked at what Trump actually stands for, but I do think it made some people be like, are we just voting for this guy because he's a Republican, or do we actually like want to see what he's about? Oh, because, like, I do like that. I like that. Yeah, because I feel like, like, if you don't, that, I, I hate to like, compare Trump to Hitler, but it's like, if, if, you, if you don't question it, like, you could wind up being backing someone that's like, something like that. That's a good point. So yeah, I, get, always, I see your argument yeah. there, absolutely. Like, I do think there's going to be some positives because of Trump, but like instead of just the uh, blind allegiance to yeah, like that uh, that political party, it's like yeah. what does the individual stand for? And what do they represent? Yeah, that's it. That's a good point. Yeah, which is uh, almost kind of backs like the argument, like like the third the independent party should gain some traction. Yeah, I I think get other options. The party system's flawed. I think it's like you can almost. Just like from an evolutionary point, it's like it just to get power, you need numbers. So all the numbers went like they would like people started backing people, and then they're like, "Oh, we need to counter that. If I'm by myself, I can't beat those numbers, so I need to get numbers too." And then it just turned into two parties. Okay. Like it was originally, I don't think it was supposed to be like that. I know George Washington said he didn't want two parties. He said that wouldn't be good for the country. Yeah. Which I definitely see as reasoning in modern times. The only positive, though, is, like, we will move slowly because we always have the other side saying no. But we could maybe, this could be arrogant to say, we could laugh about me saying this in 80 years, but (laughs) we could not fail because of that because the other side will question it. So we might not have a catastrophic failure because someone will always be like, no. That's a good point. That's a good point. Or get too too much like this. Yeah. Too much. Uh, of you can, one you thing. can kind of like attribute like the more chaotic side to the liberal side, and then more uh, not not chaos being like a bad thing, just more like spontaneous is kind of a good comparison. They're like then, so progressive, and then, it can be to a fault. I feel. True. True. But I do like in theory they're and trying then to forward. like uh, on the and very like humanitarian, and then yeah. like, the opposite end like maybe uh, too Republicans are very like orderly. To yeah. where like too much order can be a bad thing. So then the two different parties will ultimately kind of like find a balance between the two. Yeah, I think in like it, in that theory it could work, but yeah, I don't know. I do think uh, as far as saying like order, mm-hmm. I guess I guess yeah, you're right. Republicans do like order. That's why they don't like riots and shit. Like because they're just like, oh, this is crazy. We need order, which makes sense. No one wants riots. Mm-hmm. But they do. They are a small government too. So like, it's kind of like you got. Sometimes you got to pick one or the other. True. True. But I don't know. I just I I think uh, it's interesting to like make the comparison between like a spontaneous lifestyle or very uh, or like spontaneous an adventure versus like security. And then it, like if you want to apply that to politics, I feel like they're kind of uh, 
very similar and like it between the two parallel opposites like you can kind of put those two parallel opposites with the parallel opposites of liberals and uh, Republicans if that makes sense oh are you saying like they're so opposite that it's like almost the same shit or same thing uh, well like so like for example uh, order and chaos I would mm -hmm. say I would argue that they're like parallel opposites and then you could attribute those opposites to the opposites of politics as well yeah, I think politics is like a paradox. Granted, everything's a paradox, but I think I think politics can be a good example, because like the classical pro-life, pro-choice, Democrats are pro-choice, you know, in traditionally Democrats are pro-choice, Republicans are pro-life, but then like you could say, what okay, what would be a good uh good counter to that so. If the Democrats are... Oh, but then the Democrats sometimes... Sometimes hippies will favor the Democratic Party more. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, um, no... It's, I'm not grouping Republicans with war, but like I feel like sometimes hippies will align with the Democrats. And then they'll be like, oh, no war, but it's also like, oh, you're pro-choice. And then you argue you're okay killing a baby in the womb, but you don't want... Like, Oh, it's like it's their weird. arguments over here against them over here. Yeah, which that's when I think it's important to look at every. I, I sometimes I think ideology is being too vague is not good. I like you just need to look at everything. It's just like this is one issue. Try and tackle it. This is one issue. Try and tackle it. Because mm. like I think sometimes like someone's opinion on that, they'll like they'll develop their opinion and then when they move on to this topic. The one side will be like, well, you said this about that topic, and it's just like, it's like, you're not wrong. Like, it can be conflicting and sometimes hypocritical, but, like, sometimes it's just, like, tackle issues separately. Okay, okay. So, like, the same logic applied over here for abortion might be the exact opposite logic, but still is identified with the same political party. Yeah, like, because if you look at it vaguely, like, the, both parties can be so hypocritical of themselves. That is really interesting. Yeah, thing. that is interesting. I've never thought. I've never thought about that before. Yeah, but yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's it is weird. Everything's a paradox. Mark my words. <laughs> oh, here's a, here's a good question for you. Do you <clears throat> do you respect artists who have ghostwriters? So like Drake's kind of <laughs> notorious a, for having ghostwriters. Yeah, right? that's a that's a good question. What do you think? I think I, I think it comes down to. The this is actually usually I don't think about the questions I just write them up and then do them. But yeah. this is a question I did kind of think about when I was writing, which is fine. Uh, I think it comes down to do you respect the process or do you respect the finished product? And what way? Which one would be def defending what argument? So the finished product would be defending like having like like ma making music under one person's name. So let's say for example Drake <clears throat> making music under Drake's name is a team effort versus mm -hmm. or do you respect the idea of only one person putting in all the work to create a finished product and they they go through this like very i guess uh difficult process but they don't have any ghost writers or anything but drake might drake might ultimately be like the main person like to say if like this goes or this doesn't go but he has like a team around him okay or ghost writers i feel like the goal of music is like to make the best song or whatever the best project. So if collabor if it takes collaboration to do that, like I don't see why like I I, I think it's more impressive if you can write your own lyrics and they're amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I I respect Jay Z's lyrics twenty times more than Drake's because one I think they're better and two they're all him, and three he apparently does them all in his head, which is just absurd to me. He doesn't write down. That's that's what he claims. Wow. Yeah. When he said I rewrote history without a pen, that's what he meant. I think. Wow. Yeah, he said that in an interview. But at the same time, the goal is just to make the best song. So, like, if making the best song, you have to use collaboration, then, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Because, like, if it makes the song better, good for you for identifying that and making that move to make the song better. True, yeah. So I don't have a problem with it, but, like, if, if someone... Like, when it came out that Drake used a ghostwriter, like, to me, all is... A lot of the songs, to me, just, like, became a little, like, not as good. Because I was just like, oh, I thought you were this genius lyricist. It's like, you still are. 
like a genius because you could identify like find a genius lyricist, but uh -huh. it's not you. But I think Kanye has a line where he says, uh, "I might bounce ideas, but no one can come up with some shit like this." Where I just like I think it's like collaboration's important. If it makes a song better, great. If you were if you were designing your own house. And you hired, like, you worked with an architect to do, like, oh, certain floor plans. So then you worked with, like, a certain interior designer to, like, you know, for furniture or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you worked with, like, a florist for flowers. And it, like, you're the common denominator. So, like, this is ultimately your artwork. But, like, yes, people helped you. You're, like, the coordinator to <clears throat> make the finished product the best that you see it to be. And then you collaborate with the people at different points. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like... I don't, I don't think I respect when people don't give proper credit. Like, if you have a ghostwriter, like, I get maybe because of sales, you don't hurt your sales, but, like, give them credit. If they're doing it, like, I, I would rather have you just be like, yeah, like, I still made this great song than to, like, lie about it. It's interesting. It's almost like people find it, like, unethical to yeah. create certain parts, to, to not create certain parts of the song, but, like, like... Yeah, like like to be able to create like certain elements of the song, like maybe somebody cr else creates the beat completely, mm -hmm. but he doesn't give him any credit or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't like that. And then, or but like <clears throat> he's he's rapping it, and that's all he's doing. That's literally all Drake's contribution is. People find that very like unethical. Oh, if he's oh, like literally all he's doing is like spin the lyrics, and like someone else does the beat, and like. But it, but he to but me it's like at the end he's still coordinating all the other stuff he's coordinating the beats and all that yeah like then it, he, every other element of his music if he's like truly doing all the coordinating then I, I I respect that a lot but like if it's just a studio where the studio's just like all right Swiss beats go work with Drake all right uh, I don't even know who goes right so it'd be like all right J Cole like write these lyrics for Drake and then all Drake does is just like. It's like he's just asleep in the studio and everyone works, and then they're like, Drake, wake up. You just got to go do your rap part. And he's just like, oh, okay. Right. And then it's like, oh, Drake did this. It's just like a lot of other people did too. But um, I, I feel like people assume that's what goes down. But like even like with Ghost Riders, I bet he like – that they like like maybe they lay down the, the main script, and then he's like, okay, I don't like this. I'm yeah. Like, rewrite this. Or I, this – like I don't like this hook at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure – like – I'm sure Drake is extremely involved. Absolutely. There's no As any on. artist probably yeah. does. Because, like, it's it's a reflection of you, so if you're not trying to get exactly how you want it, then, like, you're half-assing. True. And I don't think You're that's, missing the point. Yeah, you're, you're missing the point. <laughs> Kanye, apparently, will give credit to, like... Like, if he's in the studio and, like, like he orders food and, like, a Papa John's guy walks in and then if he asks him his opinion and he'll be like and if the dude gives his opinion on something sometimes like apparently Kanye's just giving credit to like just random like people where it's just like oh yeah this guy inspired me I'm gonna put you on my uh, track list wow yeah like the Papa John's thing's an example I don't, that's not true right, right, but it'll, yeah. it's something like he'll do stuff like that that's where, like, wild yeah just somebody just having the smallest impact yeah it's just like if you if you contributed to this, I'll give you credit. Credit where it's due. Yeah. I respect that mentality. I do too. I've never really like thought about the process of making music until like now. Yeah. It, it probably is a lot of collaboration. There's no way that people are coming up with this all by themselves. That's why when people do come up with a lot of it by themselves, it's so impressive. True. Like, J. Cole, I think for a bit, was making his own beats, writing his own music, and doing the music. Like, he, he would maybe just work with producers to get it together, but like he was... And he, he was probably producing it too to a certain degree. That's that's really cool. Yeah. You've made me appreciate like and like admire behind the scenes stuff of what goes on like with like movies or what goes on with uh Yeah like music or whatever it may be. Yeah. That's cool to be able to like appreciate like how, the process of what went down to make that final product because I, I feel like in the past I've only appreciated like the final like product. oh this movie's hilarious and then you're like actually did you know this scene yeah they had to use a fake baby yeah because the baby couldn't quit crying or whatever it was the, it's like, oh that's kind of cool yeah I, I always have some dude I just when I when I listen to music or watch movies I'm always just like on my phone just trying to like figure out like what shit means and like Stuff like that. A cool one I found out the other day on Will Smith's Instagram was, uh, have you seen I Am Legend? 
Yeah, absolutely. Remember when the dog attacks Will? I saw that. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. It's literally just a guy wearing like in the green screen stuff with a fake dog mask, just like shoving it at Will. <laughs> that is cool. That yeah. is cool. So, I, I think people can appreciate that kind of yeah. stuff. And I just, I just never taken in consideration like what it was because it's like, it's just cool because probably the first version of a lot of things, unless if you're just insanely like smart or whatever. Apparently, the first version of I think it was Sgt. Pepper by the Beatles. Like, apparently sounded almost like a, any other band, but they just, like, kept fine-tuning and tweaking, and then it became one of, like, the better albums. But on, on the flip side, apparently 808s and Heartbreaks by Kanye, he did some of those... Apparently he did, like, Love Lockdown in, like, ten minutes. No way. Apparently. Wow. Apparently, yeah. So that's... So there's... Wow, there's really it's cool on both sides. So, like, sometimes it's crazy that you can fine-tune a project to make it perfect. Sometimes it's crazy when your first initial thing is like a masterpiece it's just golden yeah I, yeah I agree I can appreciate both yeah it's like oh it, it's appreciated for like like different reasons it's almost like a prodigy appreciation for like the Kanye like yeah. like really he just made that in 10 minutes yeah like, yeah just went in the studio wrapped it once and done yeah. that's it and then uh I've heard I've heard that with the Beatles as well like they've done oh I, I was bet. it Twist and Shout I feel like I, I could see Twist and Shout taking them like 10 minutes I can see that <laughs> I can see that just like what sounds good Twist and shout. <laughs> All right, we gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta go somewhere else, dude. And uh, my brother for a, a talent show in grade school. This just talks about the ridiculousness of like my grade school and high schools. Um, he wanted to do a twist and shout like live performance, like music video. They wouldn't let him because the part where they said, uh, we're shaking a baby now. <laughs> he had a fake baby and was like shaking it. <laughs> they said, you can't do that. And they're just like, it's, it's just, a, just a little music video type thing. Like, who even but, we're shaking a baby <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's really creative. Yeah. And then another, to describe my high school in a nutshell, uh, um, cause you're seeing your quote, you should pretty much be able to do whatever. Uh -huh. As long as it's not, like, ridiculous or, like, disrespectful or something. One of my good buddies, uh, I don't think he get mad, uh, Harris Bryson, he um, he was going to do a senior quote, I think it's from 30 Hours by Kanye, and it was, um, I go to the gym, all chest, no legs. And they, they deemed that in a pr too inappropriate as a senior quote. That makes sense. I don't, I don't know where, if, if anyone can find anything inappropriate about that, like, let me know. Old chest, no legs. I go to the gym. It's like, do you just have this insane fitness standard where, like, you need to work out legs, too? Like, yeah. <laughs> like what is this? <laughs> no, we, we value proportions <laughs> in this high school, this studious <laughs> academic academy. <laughs> it's just like, what? Just, I don't know. That's... That's cool you guys got senior quotes, so we didn't get that. Really? Yeah. Do you know what yours would be? I bet it, that's something I would have to ponder for a little bit of yeah. time. Yeah. Like, some people took them as jokes, and I, like, actually tried to find the best quote I could think. Really? Yeah. I could see me doing both. I could see yeah. me, like, taking it, like, goofing around with it, or be like, you know what? This this quote is taking me to, like, new limits. Yeah. It's, like, actually trying to inspire or whatever. Which, my, underneath my senior quote, or not my senior quote, but they, they would put all your, like, I guess achievements or like whatever you did in high school. So I did like uh, played. I mean, all all I did in, in high school was played soccer all four years, and then I was captain one of those years. That's uh -huh. all I did. Yeah. I put like Ninja Club. I put. <laughs> did you uh, get away with it? I guess they did not double check it whatsoever, <laughs> dude. I put so much like just bullshit. Like completely sarcastic. I I knew I was being sarcastic. You're like, oh, I'm sure they'll proof this and just take it out. Yeah, I didn't. I'm like, I I didn't think it would actually go through, but it definitely did. That's funny. Definitely did. We had, like ping pong club, like all these <laughs> wild things. We had a kid who uh, <laughs> he snuck into every single club picture. No way. When he wasn't uh, in the clubs, and uh, they like caught it right before, and they literally redid every picture because of it. No. <laughs> he was just, oh. Yeah, it was so funny. Yeah. Oh, that's great. He was, uh, he that's, was, that'd be great if he did get caught. Yeah, that would be hilarious. What are you saying about him? Um. He was just like a running back, and like it was just he was just a goofball. That's great. Yeah, to funny. know like the the amount of like preparation that would take <laughs> to know like when every single club is taking pictures for that like club. And I think he just like bow tied it with glasses, like <laughs> kind of like an Urkel look, and he just like stand there for like chess club and like bowling. <laughs> he was actually in bowling, 
hilariously. <laughs> it's our running back, Mike, a pretty solid bowler. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Could you imagine, like, before a big game, he, like, throws his arm out? <laughs> tears his rotating cuff, like, bowling? <laughs> Dude, they'll, uh, like, uh, injury, like, prevention. Uh, Alex Smith, the Chiefs quarterback at the Pro Bowl, uh-huh. they did a uh, dodgeball just with, like, little foam balls. Uh-huh. He threw left-handed because he didn't want to, like, risk hurting his arm. Uh-huh. And, like, obviously he was just throwing, like, a girl out there, and he's supposed to be, like, this all-pro quarterback. And, That's like, funny. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. Smart. That's smart. I wouldn't want to throw with my good arm either. I would just throw lightly and just not, not be a bitch. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm going to any charity dodgeball event, you better believe I'm beaming kids. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> It'd be so fun. Oh, it's great. Uh, another. I'm, I'm pretty much just saying high school stories at this point. No, that's cool. I'm cool with it. Um, we had a. Um, it's Louis's older brother, Colin. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, he's older. Yeah, I thought he was younger this no, entire time. No, uh, he's older, but he's one year older in school. But uh, okay, so he's my age then. Yeah, cool. So he was just like he was a kicker. He ended up going to Indiana State, which is D one. Uh, I think it's D one. But he was also a stud linebacker, and injury prevent prevention. The uh, uh, the coach wouldn't let him be linebacker because they were afraid it was gonna jeopardize his kicking because like oh if he gets hurt we're down a kicker uh-huh. but then we'd always go for it on fourth down so he like I think he I could be wrong I could be saying his story wrong but like I think he like wanted to like just I think he like did like a silent protest not silent I think he just was like I'm not going to kick for you if you don't play me at linebacker wow. yeah it was like something like that like that's a that's a fun little power struggle going on right there but yeah no, he's, he's in the power he has like, yeah he's just like I'm this good of a kicker like I like what are you going to do, not play me when I'm completely healthy because you won't play me a linebacker? True. I forget how it resolved, I, but, yeah, no, he's, he, had a, he had a boot. I respect confidence like that at any level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Even at a high school level, to be able to be like, no, coach, I'm doing this. Yeah. And if, you can, and if you're a all-state kicker and you want to play linebacker, like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, true. Yeah, I definitely... I thought about kicking in high school. Yeah. A little bit. I'd translate well to soccer. True. Did you have a bit? Like, could you kick far? Not as far. I had some people, like, on the, like, there was this one kid on my team that could kick really hard, really far. Really? I I mean, I could kick somewhat far, just because of playing soccer, but besides that, not really. Have you ever tried to do field goals? I have. I, I did it freshman year uh, on a wet field, and I think I, I was out, I, I was out, like, 35 yards, and that was the furthest I could get, And I, but I was slipping, like, any time I went further, so I'm curious what I could do now. Yeah. I'm really curious what I could do now. Yeah, that that'd be fun. Kicking field goal is fun. We just need to buy one of those little holders, or I guess we could do it ourselves. But somebody to hold it. Yeah, I guess I'm we're lazy, or I'm lazy <laughs> enough. For, I, I want a holder, <laughs> just like a little mechanical thing. There's Trud. Yeah, there's Trud. There's, there he is. <laughs> we called it. Yeah. Cool. So next time, to- oh, this is just this is something random, but it, I thought I don't know why I'm asking this on the podcast, but if you'd want to, uh, we should play racquetball in the near future. We have uh, Missouri State has nice courts. Uh, dude, it's so fun. <laughs> dude, actually, yeah, I need to play rat like Yes. <laughs> to have to not take advantage of facilities, it's just like you know you're gonna regret not doing that or not trying that. Well it's funny because my old college, like, we had one racquetball court that was like all we had, like facility wise. Like I mean we obviously we had other stuff, but that was like the the main fun thing to do. But like here we have like fifteen courts. Yeah, it's crazy. Minimal. And no, is no there a market for that? Like, <laughs> no one uses <laughs> that. <laughs> Whose idea was it? Where it's just like, he's probably just some weird futurist, and it's just like, I, in twenty years, racquetball is going to be the premier sport <laughs> in America. We will be ahead. <laughs> like, we have an unnecessary amount here, <laughs> yeah. for sure, for sure. It's repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would just play soccer in the racquetball court all the time. But yeah, that'd be fun. We'll get you some. Uh, we'll get you some left-handed brackets. Thank you. <laughs> that is the topic for another day. The uh, the disrespect lefties. I saw a left-handed notebook. Really? Yeah. Uh, two days ago. Yeah. It was um, the ream thing was on the other side. <laughs> really? Yeah. Did it say anything about being left-handed? No. Yeah. Or else it would just be like, oh, you just flipped your notebook the other way. But like, uh-huh. yeah, it was designed left-handed notebook. Oh, that's pretty cool. It was like, like Mar- yeah. About time, you know. We used to be getting witch hunted <laughs> 300 years ago. And now we got our own notebook. So. <laughs> well, I feel for you, man. I'm left-footed. Left-footed, right-handed. Yeah. 
Getting a left left footed soccer ball is probably always tough. That, dude, it's difficult. Yeah. It's harder than people think. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like people they when they haven't been in that's the, our shoes, like they don't they don't empathize. They yeah. don't care. I agree. Like, you know how hard it was to find golf clubs left handed? Exactly. That was that was a real struggle. Exactly. <laughs> so left handed deaths. That was always a That actually is a thing. That yeah. is a thing, yeah. We had a teacher in fifth grade that uh um like, you know, on a mechanical pencil, if your hand goes, it'll smear. Or at least it would. Okay, okay, that makes sense. At least I thought about that. Yeah. So it would for lefties because, like, our hand would just be trailing everything we wrote. Mm -hmm. And um, the teacher was just like, you, you can't smear it. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm left-handed. And they're like, like no, like, don't don't smear your work. And so what we devised was, uh, because dominoes slid on paper, we'd put our wrist on dominoes. No way. <laughs> that was weird. Oh, that's actually really creative. Yeah, it worked. Wait, whose idea was that? It's either me or Cooper Allen. Wow. Was, yeah, buddy. Shout out Cooper. Yeah, <laughs> shout out Cooper. I've always liked that name, by the way. Cooper. Yeah, it's a cool name. I th I want to say it was I could be very wrong again. Probably telling someone's story wrong. I think he was named after Mini Cooper. Like it was like, oh, that's a cool name. Oh like, wow. Cooper. Yeah. Okay. I know he's a big car guy, so maybe I'm just connecting that when I shouldn't. But you ever hear those names though? You're like, I like that name, and then it's like. Possible, possibly you throw it in the back of your mind. It's like possible kid or name for my kids. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> if I decide to go that route with life. <laughs> I actually have one on the way. Yeah. I was going to say. So I've got two. Mom's finding out this way. <laughs> <laughs> Send just this clip to her. Yeah. It's like, there you go. Don't say anything. No no text in the caption at all. You should, uh, the caption to this video should be like, Joe Ernst announces first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boy! <laughs> The big reveal. <laughs> Watch the entire video at the end. <laughs> Watch till the end to find out. <laughs> I should I should just market start making these clickbait. Dude, I Snapchat <laughs> clickbait is at the most ridiculous thing ever. Really? Like the headline will be like uh I'm trying to think of a good one. It'd be like um uh, it'd be like did Chris Yo like this is just a stretch, I just saw a picture, but it'd be um, on the signs like did Chris Show Ronaldo like kill someone? It'll just wow. be like, like it won't, like it'll be something like that. That's a bit of a stretch, but like, just hear me out. And then it'd be like, and then you read the article, and it's just like, fan outside of stadium, not even during the game, like got shot. It's just like, that has nothing to do with like it's the headline. So you just, yeah, that's just like, come on, man. It just happens to be where Cristiano played Plays. six seasons ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just like, it's like if you if you want to correlate that, sure, but like that's wrong. <laughs> chill, chill, yeah, chill. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, clickbait is uh it's kinda of annoying. It's it's real. It is a is an epidemic in this country. I follow this account on Twitter, it's called like Economist or something. And I'll click on their, their articles because they sound really interesting. I'll get really into them. And you have to pay to, like, subscribe. The article. It's, it's like you just maxed out your reach. I'm like, I'm about to unfollow you. Yeah. I still haven't. Yeah. I still haven't. God. I, That's annoying. Like, some, yeah, sometimes people are just... Like, I, I understand getting paid for, like, your work or whatever. But, like, sometimes people trying to make profits just too far. True. It's just, like, just... Just monetize it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> just come on. Just let me read the article. Yeah. It's like, if you truly believed in sharing good information, you wouldn't restrict the information by money. Exactly. Like, only rich people should be able to read your stuff. You know, it's, I'm sure, $5 a month, but still. But still, I'm not going to pay just to read an article every once in a while. Yeah, no. I don't know. I'm going to pay that for Spotify music. Yeah. That's why I do, like, newspapers online... You can read a lot online for free, but it costs money for the print because, like, they're actually going through the work and have to print it. Oh, so, like, okay. to me, that's kind of fair. I like. There's definitely some articles that are restricted online, but like, they still share a lot. For that's free, cool. Which I think it's news. Like, it's, your job is to sh spread the news. Like, don't restrict that. And I get like they need to be compensated as well. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm just you're sure still there are other ways than yeah. than making people read a paragraph, getting super into whatever you're talking about, and then being like, "Ha, yeah, just kidding." <laughs> they should just do advertisements in the paper, then exactly the advertisers pay them. Which I think sure. they do both. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure that they all do both, but that's what I think. Like print does, they just have commercials on. The uh, in the paper, and I'm just like that's, that, or I think it's online on like the margins they sell commercials, then that's how they make money, and then you can read for free. I think that's how they do it. So like, okay, they're so compensated. So they yeah, pretty much just monetizing it. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. 
It's like you still do your purpose of spreading the news and you're getting paid. It's like, what was that company? Yeah, I've uh, people off. Yeah. <laughs> what was the company that did that to you? Or the newspaper that like cut it off on no, you? Economist. Okay. I'm going to remember that and they will not. You're going to be reading an article. <laughs> and be like, wow, that is so interesting. That's so compelling. <laughs> yeah. That is interesting too because like the, the point of the account is to like spread useful information like that. You, I don't know. Like, yeah. Like about like economic issues and things like that. It's with music. I'm back and forth sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, if you believe in your product so much, like let everyone have it for free, then it's like I get it. Like you should get paid. But you know what I mean. Sometimes I'm just like, why can't I find a Jay Z song on YouTube? It's like I want to listen to your music. I'm sure you want me to listen to your music. Right. So let me. But he's a businessman, so he doesn't have any music on on. He has some. But a lot of his songs aren't on YouTube? No. Really? Yeah. And um, then a lot of them aren't on certain streaming sites because he's, he's has some stuff on uh, Apple, but like, he has a lot on Tidal, which is his own streaming site. So it makes sense. Yeah, shout out Chance. Yeah. Yeah, That's right? cool. Right? Yeah. Makes it even Free more music. Applicable. Yeah. Yeah. Chance is like, I think almost everyone's like ideal self, where it's like, I just did not do this for money or anything, but like... People want money, and like I don't, I don't blame them. I want money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, if, if they're willing to put in the work and get famous and build the credibility, I respect any yeah. decision they make, as yeah. long as they make good music or whatever it is. The same reason I respect athletes and artists' decisions to speak out on points of views they have. Yeah, I just, I hope they're informed points of views. But it's like if you want to risk your platform to for something you believe in, like good for you. Yeah, you should be able to do that. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, my teacher, I remember back in sophomore year of high school, she got really mad whenever Albert Pujols left the Cardinals. So again, this is like Total St. Louis, Louis yeah, St. Louis <laughs> perspective. She's like, he left for the money, and I just remember sitting there thinking, I'm like, he like, had the right he, to do that. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Like, if he wants to get paid, if he's about the money and not the loyalty to this city, then so be it. Yeah. Like, and chill out. Yeah. She's like, I just didn't think he would leave. I didn't think he would go. Yeah. I, uh, I said he loved us. <laughs> he said literally last week that he liked us or something. <laughs> well, it, from my understanding, not to uh, rat on, um, to my understanding, the situation was he he said he wanted to be a Cardinal for life. Mm -hmm. And then the Cardinals offered him a five year contract because they're like, we know you're going to get worse eventually. So then they, you're going to be worth less than. So we're just going to sign you for five years. And he's just like, I want to be a Cardinal for life. Give me 10 years. And they were like, no. And he's like, I'll, I want the security of 10 years. I'll go somewhere else. Oh, okay. Which I have no problem with. But he, got, he, got he said he wanted to be a Cardinal for life in the negotiating. So, Or was he saying that to up to price? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of Durant leaving? I have no opinion. Wait, wait. Durant left... Not the Warriors. When he left the Thunder. Oh. That'd be a plot twist. Okay. I was like, so wait, opera that's what? Happening. Yeah. I was like, I haven't heard about this at all. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I mean, like, it doesn't get a lot of, like... He gets a lot of hate for that. <laughs> just because he went to the best team? Yeah, and they beat him. Like, I think it was a weak competitor move, but if you want to do that, like, it's your career. It's like, if you're good enough to, like, shift the, the power of the NBA by one decision, uh -huh. which is what LeBron mastered, um... Then, like, you have, you earn the skill. Like, collective bargaining says you can leave, which you negotiated for against the owners. You have that right. If exactly. you want to exercise your right, like, it's like if he wasn't good, it wouldn't be a big deal. But because he's so good at what he does, it's a big deal. Yeah, well said. Yeah. That's exactly what everybody's yeah. pissed off about. It's like, it's because he's so great. Like, I, I think from a competitive standpoint, it's like, like, that looks looks very weak, like, you literally joined the team that beat you. You blew a through and lead to them. But if if you want to go play what you think, like, the most beautiful form of basketball there is and you want to be a part of that, like, you want to win a lot of championships, I think we all want to do that. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> no one doesn't. Like, I'm, I'm about the loyalty. Loyalty is important there. But, like, like, I've played against soccer teams and I'm like, wow, like, this team was better than us. And yeah. Like, if I could choose which team I'd rather play on, Sometimes I would actually choose the other team, like assuming I get along with the guys. Like, but dude, were you like not to put you on blast? Were you a mercenary or a uh, when you did you hop team? I did hop. Yeah, it's funny you know that. I did. Yeah, did, I hop. Do you want to go in on that or no? Uh, I think. Sorry, I was looking up there. I saw something moving in the window, but uh, the, the camera's just <laughs> orbiting. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I just moved around because I was just looking for the best team, and I didn't find that team until I like felt like a really like good fit for me until my junior year of high school. So yeah, well, if but you, I switched around probably five or six times between seventh grade and and junior year. <laughs> That's like one a year. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I was on a different team for. I've switched a lot. There's one team I played on for literally six months, and they sucked. I was their star player, which was That's me cool. and this other kid were their star player, which was cool. But, but it's I wanted not fun. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to be like uh, I'm like a better team. It's like, do you think the ideal situation is to be like the worst starter? So therefore, like everyone on your, like assuming you're you're good and everything, be the worst starter so everyone on your team's really good and you're still a starter so you get credit for success. I like that because it pushes you. Yeah, but if you can be the best player and the best team in the league, I think that's most ideal. True, true. But, but to like, like get to, to a that. spot, because that's what I felt I did. Like, like when I was switching around, I went from like that low level team. Say we were ranked, I, I don't know what we were ranked. Was but, this on the same league, by the way? Uh, so would you similarly... awkwardly play these teams? Oh yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sometimes. Was it awkward? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. Pretty much like a really quick summary of what happened is I, I was on this kind of shittier team. Then I had an opportunity to go to this better team midway through the season. Left. Then I went. Then I got asked. Like, after playing with that team for, like, a year, year and a half, I got asked by a better team that we played against. Literally, same thing. We lost yeah. in State Cup. Lost one on the, the coach walks up to me after the game and goes, hey, I really like your style of play. Or like, pretty much complimented me. He's like, I want you to come play with me. That's cool. And they were, like, they were like the – Did you say yes at on They the were ranked number four in the state at the time, and I was on, like, the number ten in the state. And I, and I was um, – I considered that and then went left uh, that – Upcoming year, so like like six months later, I left and went to that team, and then uh, that team kind of like slowly that team just kind of fell apart and dissipated. So then I ended up going to the number two team in the state, mm-hmm. and then, and then that team like got really good while I was on them. Like that's, I, that's cool. what I was. I was I would say I was the worst starter on the team. Yeah, that's my personal opinion. But it's it's cool because you're like debatably the best team in the league, and you started still. Joe, Joe, there's something uh, in Moneyball that. Jonah Hill said. Um, <clears throat> have you seen Moneyball? Uh, I have. Uh, do you remember the part where Brad Pitt got the offer from the Red Sox to make him the highest paid general manager in sports? No, I don't. So he got that offer, but his heart was in with the A's. He's like, I don't want to leave, but, like, my God. And then Jonah Hill said, it's not about the money. It's about what the money represents, and it shows that you're worth it. So it's like it's not necessarily about, like, to me – it's like, it's not about like oh like I'm disloyal. It's about like, the best team wants me to play for them. Like, right, like it shows right. that like they value me, and I just like I want to be valued for who I play for. And if the best team values me, like that's awesome. Why not? Exactly. Yeah, like it's it's not about the money. It's about what the money represents. But that's easy to say when you're getting paid. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Sure. yeah, that's a way other. Element. Yeah. <laughs> around. Yeah, but. I'm I'm cool nipping this in the butt whenever. Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty much. I have like two topics, but I, honestly, I'm cool just going napping before tonight. Yeah, I'm down. Tonight's gonna be fun. Well, let's boogie. <laughs> hey, hey, let's boogie. Hey. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, oh, dude, we almost made an hour. Almost. That's what. That's exactly what we said too. Should we just sit in silence for two minutes. Yeah, just a moment of silence. <laughs> I'll take a knee. I'll just kind of. <laughs> cool. Well, I hope we uh. You enjoyed watching our faces float in the air. <laughs> We're about to green tune this. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, cool. Do you have anything else to say? Nope. All right, deuces. Well, actually, I want to thank you real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for I, having me. <laughs> hell, yeah. hell, yeah. This is awesome. This yeah. is awesome. And well, thanks for traveling all the way. Definitely. Here. You know, it's, it, it, it is raining, so, like, it, it wasn't easy, but, you know, I made it work for you, so I want you to know that. Well done. Well done. And I... I'm sorry if I disrespected your time with that alarm in the middle. Yeah, no, it's like I'll never get that five seconds back, but like it's. It is what it is. What it is you, know? I mean, you did kind of interrupt my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's forgivable. <laughs> All right, cool. Deuces.